Gabrielle Ibarra, and I'm going to be talking about Chapter 5, the Rational Choice Perspective, um, in the section of Sources of Inspiration. So this chapter starts with um, saying that the Rational Choice Perspective is connected to the Classical School of Criminology, which was created by Italian social thinker um, Cesar Beccaria. And he argued that humans are rational hedonists and that they seek and value alternatives to maximize their pleasure and minimize pain. Um, and he argued that the law should be used in a way to punish people that commit crimes, not as individuals, but as to the degree of the crimes that they commit. And then his ideas were embedded in several areas. So in Britain, Jeremy Bentham used his ideas in his writing about um, utilitarianism. And then also in England, the criminal law underwent a complete reform between 1820 and 1861. And then the most important one was the famous French Penal Code. Um, the code was not only to legislate on every crime, but to fix by statute the penalty for each degree of each kind. So the code then created neoclassical modifications, which explored several fronts such as premeditation. So, so like should first time offenders be given more severe punishment because they are freer in will and are less locked in the force of habit. And then circumstance, do weather, climate, stress, pressure, and situational factors affect offenders in their choice of crime and mental condition with respect, like should uh, some deviant actors not be held accountable for their acts by virtue of insanity. And then rational choice was put aside when positivistic quests for causes of crime took over in criminology. Um, so then we'll talk about Marwin, Marvin Wolfgang. Robert Figlio and Thorsten Selin, um, they all reference classical control ideas and then they propose model of rational deterrence. So they all believe that after one or two offenses, um, most offenders fall out of the pool of delinquents, that little should be done with delinquent youth until they arrive at a third offense, that full force of sanction should be reserved for offenders who strike out at a third time. The severity of a punishment should increase heavily for each subsequent offense, and people who commit more than a certain number of offenses should be locked up forever. Um, so then we'll talk about political scientist James Q. Wilson. So he believed that crime was a, fu a function of external forces and can be altered by programs that are controlled by the government. And he also argued that control efforts should be used to discourage um, would-be offenders and incarcerating known criminals. He also believed that people aren't evil or innocent, that they are watchful, dissembling, and calculating of their chances. Um, so now moving on to classical criminology, neoclassic modifications, and positivistic rebuttals. Um, so they all have intellectuals in the development of contemporary rational choice perspective. Um, central tenets of the perspective are that people choose to commit or forego crime in considerations of both personal and situational factors. So for personal factors, it would be like um, his or her needs, um, thrills, or as a part of revenge, and then um, skills and their chances of success, having success in that crime. And situational factors would be a rational offender evaluates, may range, from the vulner vulnerability of the target, location of the operation, reward of criminal undertaking, and the risk of apprehension to the severity of the punishment. Um, and then rational choice theory, it claims that crime is a product of criminal opportunity and that opportunity opens the f opportunities open up when corner homes, corner homes are available, secluded properties are available, unlocked cars, open doors, unattended luggage, and access to streets and to neighborhoods from traffic roads are available. And then it may, crimes may also increase when police officers, um, vigilant residents, security fences, and household alarms are not there. So once we assume that offenders act rationally, the rational choice perspective places its main emphasis on how to deal with with the people that commit crime. So four of those strategies would be um, situational crime prevention. So that reduces, it reduces criminal incidents, such as having like access control, surveillance, reducing temptation, and strengthening, strengthening moral blame. 
Um, another one is general deterrence. So the fear of consequences from a crime. So if criminals are rational and they know that crime is punished, they will choose not to commit a crime. Another one is uh, specific deterrence. So punish known criminals so they won't repeat their offenses. Criminal learns from their painful experience through punishment. And then there's three variables to that one, which is certainty, um, that they're caught and punished. Then severity, which is the level of pain or suffering or threat through the punishment. And then celerity is the speed in which a punishment is applied to the offender or the offense. And then incapacitation is uh, they reduce crime by denying motivated offenders the opportunity to commit a crime. So they shorten their span of criminal career and contribute... So, and they contribute offenses by being incarcerated under a three strike or out policy. And then um, incapacitation can also cause problems, though. So, it can steep increase in prison population. Uh, prison maintenance and management is costly. And then some offenders are unnecessarily locked up for longer than they should be. Um, crowdedness and deteriorating conditions make prisons a fertilizing ground for future criminality. And then motivated, motivated individuals are willing to take an incarcerated person's place if they can benefit from the crime. So such as like um, in a drug dealing example. Um, so if one of the main persons that's in charge of a drug dealing market is in jail, another person that is out is much more willing to take that person's place in the outside world because they would be receiving the money from the drug dealing. Um, and at the end of the chapter, it just says that like researchers try to pinpoint how economic, culture, and social forces or interests shapes an individual's choices on substance use and treatment. And based on values of life, people that remove themselves from treatment do so because they want to reduce the feeling of being at risk and increase equity of social capital. Thank you.